Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another video in the series about Glastonbury Town Deal. I'm here in the august surroundings of the, the council chamber here at the town hall with the wonderful Connor, who's our town clerk, and he's going to talk to us today about... St Dunstan's House Community Health and Wellbeing Hub. Say that very slowly. <laughs> so, so, it's an, it's, it's another one that need, needs a nickname. It does it? need a nickname. In terms of our nickname, I just call it St Dunstan's. That will do. But it's the St Dunstan's Community Health and Wellbeing Hub. Absolutely brilliant. Fantastic. Now, this is an amazing plan. The bit I'm excited about is the atrium, which we'll talk about in a minute. But for now, I'm just going to ask Connor just to talk us briefly through. I know he's got some drawings he's going to show us as well. Just to run us briefly through what's going to be going on here and the rough idea of the time scale. So over to you, Connor. Thank you, Gabe. So what's happening with the St Dunstan's Community Health and Wellbeing Project is that we are using the town deal money and raising some grant funding money on top to uh, renovate the derelict St Dunstan's house and turn it into a community health and wellbeing hub so that activities and sessions relating to the wellbeing and health of people who are living in Glastonbury and its environs um, can happen from right in the middle of the town. We're perfectly situated. We're on the bus route. There's a car park right next door. And generally, from most places in the town, we're pretty easy to walk to as well or to, uh, to cycle to. So that is the plan for what's going to be happening with St Dunstan's. So that's the existing part of the building. And then there is a plan within the project to also construct an atrium to link the town hall and St Dunstan's house, which are neighbouring buildings, but there is wasted space between them that we are going to bring to life um, as an event space. And that's the bit I'm interested in. I'm excited about that. So let me get this right, just so that people understand. St Dunstan's house, they might think of as the office at the front and, and where they can go and get information. Yes, it's, it's the... It's actually derelict at the back, is it? It is, yes. So the front has been renovated into the Glastonbury Information Centre and the Town Council's reception. Um, because that was renovated um, when the town council bought St Dunstan's House in about 2015, 2016. I think it opened in 2017. Um, but yes, the rest of St Dunstan's House behind the area that has been renovated is completely derelict at the moment. And it, it's such a shame that a beautiful building right in the centre of the town that has such, such potential was left to go derelict. However, the town deal has presented an opportunity for that building to be brought back to life. Brilliant. So once it's been done, can you give us an idea of what's going to go on in there? Yes, well, it's still very much blue sky thinking. Uh, we're integrating it with the, um, the five-year plan for the NHS for health services. We've engaged with stakeholders across the health sector, um, the social care sector, and the tertiary charity um, sector for services and activities relating to health and well-being. We've run some uh, pilot sessions to prove demand and allow providers to try out new ideas free of charge in the spaces that we already have. And they ranged from, there were art classes, healthy eating classes, there was yoga for the menopause. It really is a wide range of things that could happen in this building. It's anything relating to improving people's health and well-being. So that ranges from physical health, mental health, spirituality, well-being, etc., etc. That's good because these are traditionally quite disparate. They're set around all over the place. Yes. So this brings it all under one roof, which gives you a certain amount of joined up, which, you know, is a good yes. thing. You want one place to go and get everything you need in one go. Absolutely. And also signposting. So if it's not delivered out of or within St Dunstan's house and residents and people can be signposted to other services, mm -hmm. there'll also be a signposting service within... Um, the, the staff team at St Dunstan's House as well. Fantastic. Well, we're going to go downstairs in a minute and have a look, mm. but if you could just walk us through these wonderful drawings yes. that you have here and explain what's happening so people can get some idea. Yes, so these are the plans that are currently with the planning authority for our planning application. Currently Mendip District Council, but in a few days' time it will be the Somerset Council. We're hoping it will go to their planning committee in May. Um, what the drawings are showing is Anything past, essentially, my hand on this drawing, this back of St Dunstan's house is derelict. The atrium, which is shown just in uh, a space in the yellow, is brand new between the town hall and St Dunstan's house. 
This element at the back is an extension to the ground floor of St Dunstan's House to provide a changing places toilet, which is a national scheme that provides toilets and changing facilities for um, people who need hoists and mm -hmm. carers need to go in, etc, etc, and a storeroom. Uh, we're providing a domestic sized kitchen and a, a multi-use room on the ground floor, as well as a small meeting room and a, a, a WC. It gets a little bit more exciting in terms of St Dunstan's House on the first floor. So we'll, we'll go and have a look around here, but obviously you can see the roof of the atrium. So the atrium is only a ground floor building. It will cut in just under the, um, the large windows to the main hall. It's got a glazed spine down the middle, which has integrated solar PV panels. So it's not only glazing, but also solar PV panels. That's a bit cutting edge, isn't it? Very cutting edge, yes, but also very exciting because it yeah. gives the space, it glazed at the front, glazed at the back, and the glazed spine down the middle a real feeling of lightness, airiness, mm. and you get beautiful views. So again, we're providing a number of multi-use rooms and a staff welfare room, as well as accessible WCs on the first floor, um, with a plan to provide a platform lift for level access uh, to the first floor, so that that's, that's, it is accessible for everyone. Now, some might say it's quite lazy just to call them multi-use rooms on the plans, but what we're doing is we're making sure that the fit out of the building is as versatile as possible so that a whole range of um, service providers, community groups, organisations can come in and deliver what they want to deliver out of St Dunstan's House. And we don't earmark any one space for any one particular purpose. Otherwise, someone might come to us and say, I need a room for 30 people. Oh, but you've put that in the room. That means I can't use it now. We're making the fit out... Um, suitable for as many different uh, kind of services and activities and, and, as possible. That, yeah. Yes, exactly. Excellent. So it is a very exciting project, but as I say, it's a little bit blue sky thinking at the moment, yeah. um, because it won't be ready for a couple of years, but we're already engaging with such a wide range of stakeholders, and they're very, very excited about this project, just like I am. Should we go and have a look at the ground? Uh, that would be great. Let's do that. So this is currently the Town Council's yard in inverted commas you can see it's very much a working yard at the moment it's mm -hmm. a bit of a mess but i think you'll probably agree that it's very much a wasted space we have the beautiful town hall on the left hand side the beautiful st dunstan's house on the right hand side and just a mess in between this used to be the driveway for st dunstan's house many people will probably remember when it had gates and opened up onto magdalen street but then when the town council bought um, St Dunstan's house, the level was raised and it became, it became a yard and the, and the current rubble wall was constructed on Magdalen Street so it was, was no longer a driveway. So we've obviously got plans to relocate a lot of what you see, the town council's vehicles will be able to park elsewhere and we'll be able to store things elsewhere. Mm. Um, oh, look at the, you can see that building is in a bit of a state at the back, isn't it? It is, yes. So um, you can see where Neatly toward the back, the concrete render has been chipped off and the rubble wall exposed. Mm -hmm. You can also see parts where it's not been quite so neatly exposed, where the elements have got to it. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, essentially, the back side of St Dunstan's is a complete renovation from the roof down to the ground. Is the plan to keep the rocky finish or is it going to be covered so, again? So it's not going to be covered again, but the conservation officers would like us to lime wash it, whitewash it. Mm. Um, okay. Uh, I, you know, it's, it's a matter of... I like of, it natural, uh, Yes, it, it, it is. A, it's a matter of personal opinion. I like it as is, exposed. Me too. Um, but... It, it, the, Especially with all the stonework around it. Exactly. The, the conservation officers have advised us that they would like it to, to see it whitewashed. Mm. So that's, that's no doubt a planning condition we will have to okay. satisfy. That's and sure. probably... So although we've got the planning application in at the moment... Um, it's a full planning application, so it's not outline, but we have the opportunity mm. to go into what's called the detailed design stage, which is really where we drill down on this is exactly the finish we want, this is exactly the floor we want, etc., etc. So that may well be a conversation for during the detailed design stage. So mm. we're hoping to get planning permission this coming uh, summer, May, June time. Then we will start work on the detailed design stage. We're planning for that to maybe take six to nine, up to 12 months. And then once you then appoint a contractor, et cetera, et cetera, then we can get metaphorically spades in the ground Excellent. and work being started on the house. And so realistically, when will we expect a finished atrium? I am hoping that the facility will be open in mid 2025. 
Great. What we're planning to do, because we have to raise additional money over and above what our allocation from the town deal is, mm -hmm. we're planning to start work on St. Dunstan's House first. Mm -hmm. So if there's absolutely no grant funding or we can't get all of the money that we need, at least we have St. Dunstan's House, because the atrium is almost like the cherry on top it's of the, the cake. It's the cherry, the other important stuff yes. is next door. Um, so yeah, the important stuff is to make sure that St. Dunstan's House is renovated and used. Um, the atrium is the cherry on top. Um, so we're probably looking to slightly phase the works and that we'll probably start St. Dunstan's House, maybe not fully complete it if mm -hmm. we get the money lined up before the atrium starts, but it may well be that St. Dunstan's House is finished and opens before the atrium is constructed. Fantastic. Let's go downstairs. Brilliant. So here we are. We've come downstairs. We're between the town hall, which is over there, and... Dunstan's house, which is here, and we're about to go in. Connor's got the key. Apparently, they won't let him keep the key, but nope. he has got the key on borrow. Let's yes. go and have a look. <laughs> <laughs> what we need to do, Gabe, is we need to put our vision goggles on. Very much, this is derelict and a bit of a mess, but it should make the transition when it's open and people can start using it all the more sweet. Absolutely. Welcome inside. Thank you. We should have done it like MTV Cribs. Ooh, I should I have opened it. I hope they keep the parquet flooring we've got down here. Look yes, at that. Oh, the plan is very much to keep the parquet flooring, oh. a good sand and a nice hard varnish. Oh, yes. And it will be perfect. It's my favourite flooring in the world. It really is. <laughs> I love it. Come on in. Thank you. What we'll do, the lighting conditions aren't great in here because it only really has emergency lighting. But what we'll do, we'll make a start at the back of the ground floor okay. and we'll work our way through the rest of the house. Fantastic. So we'll come all the way out to the back here. What was it originally used for? So St Dunstan's house has had a number of uses. It's had a number of residential uses, but also commercial uses. So a lot of people will probably remember it's been a dentist, it's been a solicitor's, um, but it, it has, it was initially constructed obviously as a residential uh, building mm. and it's just had a number of uses through the years. Um. I can't remember the year, but Glastonbury Abbey bought it, mm -hmm. uh, and then they sold it to the town council in 2015-16. Yeah, I was on the council when all that was going on. Mm. Um, so this was, um, it's now our Christmas room, but it was, you'll recognise these from the, the shop displays at Christmas time. This was the kitchen in St. Dunstan's house. So this is the room, if you remember the plans where I mentioned we're going to have a okay. domestic style kitchen. Back in here. Um, so what we'll be creating is we'll need a corridor all the way through to the back because there'll be the changing places toilet at the very back. So we will be putting up a, a stud wall along here, but in this space will be the domestic kitchen which will serve small scale catering for anything happening in the building, but also the likes of healthy eating classes, cooking classes for families, young people, older people, a whole range because there was definitely identified a need for healthy eating classes, but also cooking classes because there are, are a surprisingly large number of people who, who just don't know, they've never been taught how to cook well. Mm. Mm. And that's not necessarily in the Michelin star sense of well, no, 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 but no. cook good food. Mm. And there's opportunities there to link in with the likes of the Food and Regenerative Farming Project, its nickname Bridie's Farm, mm. which you've already done a video on. Yes. Yes. Out the back that way is a very messy shed that I shan't assault viewers' eyes with. It's full <laughs> of chainsaws, etc., etc., that there are community services officers use. Mm -hmm. But that will be the multi use room. And Good. then out the back, further than that, is the changing places toilet. Brilliant. So here, we've moved on now from the kitchen. We've passed what will be a meeting room and what will be a WC. Not the most exciting of, of rooms. But this was the main hallway and the main staircase for St. Dunstan's house. So these are the doors out to the beautiful St. Dunstan's garden, which I do hope some of the viewers have had a chance to come in and use. We recently planted the holy thorn at the tail end of, mm -hmm. of last year. Um, and what would have been the case when this was a domestic house would have been that there would have been the view straight through from the front door, which was turned into a window in the 20th century, straight through here to the main staircase, which will go up in a second, and views straight out to the garden. So we're looking as part of the plans how we can incorporate that view through the building and put the building back to how it was initially designed and envisaged when it was, was first built. Mm. But where you're stood, Gabriel, and where I'm now stood, is actually an extension to the backside of St Dunstan's house. These here are the original back walls of St Dunstan's house, and you can see just how thick they used to construct mm. these walls. They do. There's a number of these through the property, which obviously we are retaining for mm -hmm. um, 
heritage and character purposes. Wherever we can retain original features, you are. we absolutely are. Because good, we good, want good. this to feel homely, warm and welcoming, <sighs> not clinical like a brand no. new hospital would be. No, 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 no. This isn't even going to be any sort of form of hospital. This is a health and well-being centre, but we don't want it feeling clinical. No. So this is the old original staircase and view up to the first floor, obviously completely derelict. I normally tell people that these steps, while they're safe, they're a little bit spongy. So when you follow me up, Gabe, just do be a little bit careful. Okay. So this is the view at the top of the stairs of St Dunstan's House. Beautiful view out to St Dunstan's Garden and also across the Abbey grounds out there to the back. Our plans show that um, the platform lift will be at the end of this veranda and this sash window will be turned into a door and this will allow for mm. level access up to the first floor. Mm. Just behind us here, Gabe, this is the individual largest room in St Dunstan's House. As you can see, very light and airy. So this is, the, as I say, the individual largest room in St Dunstan's house. This is probably good for, depending on seating layout, probably 20 up to maximum of 30 people. Um, but again, beautiful views behind you, out over the abbey, and the light from the large windows. I believe this room was at one point split. It was half a bedroom and half a sort of studio, artist gallery which is why the roof's been raised there and you can see where there used to be a partition wall. But what viewers might notice is that quite a lot of the floor levels in this house are very interesting. I do hope it doesn't give anyone seasickness, but I do compare them sometimes to a bit of a ski slope. Yes, yeah, but, yeah. but all of that will be sorted out during the course of the renovations. Basically, everything's going to be lifted, sorted and put back one for one, if not the original floorboards. So this room um, is probably one of the more interesting rooms, uh, other than the large room at the back. Um, this room's got a very interesting little nook on the back, which is part of that extension that we, that we uh, mentioned. You get a beautiful view out over the abbey grounds at this first floor level. Um, but because it's such a small space within that extension, it's not really a room of its own, and it's only accessible from inside this room. So what we want to do in this room is create quite a, um, a cosy and calming sort of space that won't necessarily be hireable, but it could be. So while most of the fit out in the building will probably be hard floors, I am thinking of getting the mural trail involved in doing artistic aspects in each of the rooms, but generally they'll probably be pretty plain walls so that it's you know quite neutral. But in here we want to create a calmer space, probably carpeted, slightly darker colours. We wanted to maybe pick out some of the colours in that beautiful period fireplace that's just behind you over there, Gabe, some of the greens and the more earthy colours. And maybe have this as a sort of calm, tranquil, breakout space or a bit more of a spiritual space or if someone needed a one-on-one -on -one chat with someone, the door can be closed. and it's like just a counselling room. Exactly. Maybe. And actually, the little nook out there, the wall is so thick with a good soundproof door would be you a can't perfect... Hear them screen. Perfect little. <laughs> Hopefully, they won't be screaming, no, no. but um, you could have perfectly private conversations in there. Mm. And with the view out over the abbey, even on a not very nice day like today, it's a restful view. It's absolutely beautiful. Mm. So, that's probably one of the more interesting uses. The other rooms will just be, as, I, as we mentioned when we looked at the plans, quite generic, but open to a whole number of activities and services so that this building is really utilised, so that, it, you know. It is in the heart of the town, right in the centre, and we want this building to be a bit of a, a beating heart, a beating community hub mm. for the benefit of everyone's health and well-being. Fantastic, fantastic. So we're gonna, I want to look at where the atrium's going, and yes. I think we've covered pretty much everything today, yeah, haven't we? Yeah, I think so. So let's go talk atrium. Yes. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is where the atrium is going to go, where I'm now stood out in the open air in a very short period of time will be a beautiful glass building, just like the one you can see on screen now. 
So I'm going to ask Connor to tell me a bit about it. Thank you, Gabe. Yes, so the atrium is a very exciting part of this project. It's going to physically link the Town Hall and St Dunstan's House together, so there will be a shared space here in the middle. The lean-to here at the side of the Town Hall is coming down. As I said, the, the, the roof for the atrium will cut in just underneath those windows um, on the side of the main hall. And all of this space here, up to the existing lean-to at the end of St Dunstan's House down there, all the way down to in front of our lovely transit van, <laughs> where the gravel becomes paving, yeah. will be contained within the atrium. We're knocking in two doors from the main hall directly into the atrium. So they'll be under two of these um, large windows. So the atrium space can be used in conjunction with a space such as the main hall as part of St. Dunstan's house, because there will also be links into the house or as a space all of its own. So it'll have a glazed rear with doors and a glazed frontage with doors. So it's a truly versatile space. And you can just sort of imagine it with that glazed spine going down the middle. And if you turn around, Gabe, when everything's tidied up, you get lovely views out over certainly the Lady Chapel. Mm. And it's just going to be a really, really beautiful light and airy events, activity, session space, linking what happens in the town hall, what happens in the community health and wellbeing hub and allowing us to treat the whole complex as one unit. So earlier on we were talking about this, with, I was talking about this with Connor and he was telling me something really, really exciting. This uh, glazed spine that he's talking about, this glass glazed spine, is actually made, it's a brand new state-of-the-art photovoltaic cell that you can see through. Have I got that right? That's correct, Tell Gabriel, us a bit yes. about it, please, because that really is quite something else. Yeah, so I don't know too much about the technical specifications, but certainly within our plans, we wanted to incorporate measures to reduce our energy use and our, our carbon footprint. So we have built in aspects such as rainwater storage, particularly for watering the floral displays during the summer, and also those photovoltaic panels that are they essentially, if you're stood up and looking through them, just look like slightly tinted glazing. Obviously here in the centre of town, in the conservation area, between a Grade 2 listed building in St Dunstan's and a Grade 2 star listed building in the Town Hall, which Gabriel told me a very interesting fact earlier that only 6% of listed buildings get the, get the Grade 2 star um, uh, classification. Um, obviously we're slightly restricted in what we can do visually. So we've been in very close liaison with the conservation officers and planning officers about what is acceptable in terms of the atrium and the atrium is very acceptable. In terms of um, solar panels, sometimes not quite so. Obviously being right in the centre of town in a conservation area and between a grade two and a grade two star listed building, there are certain restrictions that we obviously have to fall within um, and one of those is the visual impact. Um, and also being between two buildings, there would only be a small amount of roof space that we could install solar PV panels, but we were very keen to. So we've gone for this leading edge technology where it essentially just looks like glazing, but has the added benefit of creating electricity. And presumably once they're up, you can tell everybody about them because I didn't know about them. So, you know, spread the word, spread the word, because presumably they can replace windows with that and it would be able to put it on houses on a roof if it's clear would it certainly i imagine certainly they 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 will be able to i'm i'm not an expert on the technical specifications of of mm. that of that system it's been um not devised by our architect but in, included in our plans by our architect mm. and certainly it's very exciting to see how quickly technologies particularly in the renewable sector mm. is moving it's moving on and means that you know so many more people will be able to install these kind of features in their homes, not only reduce their, their energy costs, but the, uh, the, their impact on the environment. Well, I would like to thank Connor for showing us around today. Thank you, Connor. Thank you for coming, Gabriel. It's been a pleasure as always. And as I say, I'll be coming back periodically to see what's happening. Uh, it's going to be a while before anything happens. It will be a while until anything visual happens. We'll certainly keep you up to date, Gabriel. We'll be doing updates, but when they break soil here, we'll be coming back to see that happen. Don't yep. you worry. And we'll be following the, the atrium when that builds as well. Yes. It'll be good. But for now, thank you, Connor. Thank, thank you. you for watching and keep watching. Push that bell, hit the subscribe <laughs> for all the rest of the, the, uh, the town deal plans because I'll be going to see all of the 11 projects one by one. This is only the second, there's still nine more to come.